ran two of three minute seas of competition. Molly Graffin from School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, she will be talking about nitrogen, public water enemy number one. Okay, I need everyone's participation. Raise your hand if you would drink this water. Okay, now raise your hand if you would drink this water. Well, mostly everybody raised their hand, except for the person who saw my talk last time, raised their hand for the, clean, the water that looks clean. But what if I told you there were invisible contaminants in this water that could be harmful? One example of an invisible contaminant is nitrogen, specifically a form called nitrate. And unfortunately, on Long Island, our water is contaminated with nitrate. This sneaky, invisible contaminant gets into our groundwater, our drinking water, and our coastal seawater. Nitrate in drinking water is bad because high concentrations are linked to infant death and cancer in adults. Nitrate getting into coastal seawater is bad because it can lead to things called harmful algae blooms. These are serious problems and local legislator Steve Ballone even calls nitrogen public water enemy number one. The source of this nitrogen is largely household wastewater, which we are all creating every day. My research is on water treatment systems designed to remove nitrogen to help make our water clean again. One of the water treatment systems I study is called a permeable reactive barrier, or as I call it, a PRB. It sounds complicated, but it's really just a trench in the ground filled with wood chips and groundwater flows through the barrier and is treated before it reaches coastal seawater. And the treatment in the barrier is done by microbes that perform a series of reactions. And the final product is nitrogen gas, which is harmless and makes up the majority of our air. So far, we've found that groundwater with high nitrate is completely treated and the microbes remove all of the nitrogen. Even when we add seawater, and the microbes experience a high salinity condition, they are still able to completely remove the nitrogen, which is a very surprising result. However, we have found that some, under these high salinity conditions, some mischievous microbes are producing a chemical called hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs, and it could be toxic to the good microbes which are removing nitrogen. But fortunately, we've found that the levels of hydrogen sulfide are not so high that they are toxic to the good microbes removing nitrogen. So these are very promising and exciting results. And overall, my research will help inform citizens and legislators about practical methods for solving this nitrogen problem.